Om Shanti, how are you? In the recent days, we have been witnessing several deaths among people in their 20s, 30s and 40s. Um, and it is no wonder we blame those deaths due to either COVID or the COVID vaccine because it happens after COVID. Maybe that's one of the factors, but that's not the only factor. Because if you see the age group which affects the most, they are believed to be uh, the most sexually active people. So that might have contributed to these deaths. And moreover, during COVID, Undoubtedly, every single person on this planet had this death scare. So that might have altered their immune system, their mental health and their physical health. And now we are witnessing many young people who are very healthy die while singing, while playing while eating, especially we, we are seeing many deaths soon after they consume some non-vegetarian foods. So that might also be one of the factor for these deaths. People really get curious <coughs> about why these sudden deaths happen. So whether it is due to COVID or not, but still they are curious to know the reason whether it is due to their bad karma or the bad karma of their family members. It could be anything. But one thing is sure, whether you find the answer for that or not, we are not going to get those dead persons alive back. Nor can we stop anybody from dying in the future. <clears throat> Even we have no control over our own death. So I don't think it is uh, good to spend time in thinking about something that we have absolutely no control over. But there is one thing we have absolutely control over and that is how we die. We may not know when we die, but still it is fully in our hands that how we die. Majority of the people die unconsciously. Very few die consciously. What do you mean by unconscious? So if you are conscious of anything that's related to this world, then you are considered unconscious. It is only when you are fully conscious about only yourself and fully unconscious of everything around you, then you are considered to be conscious. And if you die in that stage, it can be said that you died consciously. So what's the difference? Well, uh, what benefit one receives by dying consciously? So to die consciously, one should first live consciously. Only then he can die consciously. So by conscious, I mean soul conscious or self conscious. So we are actually the souls that shine like a tiny star in between the eyebrows. It is the soul that controls this body. So it is the soul that sees through the eyes, listens through the ears, performs everything using this body, but we are not this body. One should be conscious of this. That is what we call as soul conscious. So whatever we enjoy in this life, it is all because of the good karma that we have been doing in our past births. And it is because of the sinful karma that we suffer in this birth. 
so there are two sorts of actions one is charitable actions and another is sinful actions so one uh, it is because of those charitable actions that we are enjoying the uh, benefits of whatever we are enjoying in this present birth but one thing we should be aware of is whatever um, pleasure we experience in our previous birth what we enjoy in this present birth is nothing in front of what we enjoyed in our previous birth which means we will suffer more and more as we go down the line and the main reason for that is the amount of charity is going to be spent in the form of uh, wealth our talent intellect so we just spend the benefits of all the charity that we have performed in the past so whether you are born into a good family whether you have a healthy and beautiful body it all happens as a result of the charity we performed and we know that this world is getting worse and worse day by day so obviously the amount of charity we performed in our previous birth is always going to be higher compared to the amount of charity we perform in this birth so obviously the amount of uh, happiness and peacefulness that we enjoyed in our previous birth is going to be higher compared to that of the present birth some rich man once said that if you are born poor it is not your fault but if you die poor it is definitely your fault but the reality is we all are born somewhat rich compared to when we die because whatever we have accumulated in terms of physical wealth we are not going to take it to the next birth so you have just wasted your time and effort in accumulating those physical wealth at the cost of your next birth because uh, you spent much of your time wasting uh, in accumulating the physical wealth and uh, so that you didn't have enough time to accumulate for your next birth which means you you haven't spent time enough to uh, perform charity that's going to be transferred to your next birth charity can be anything like building schools building hospitals uh performing donation to charity organizations and so on for example if you have built hospitals in your previous birth you will be having a very healthy body in the present birth if you have built um schools in your previous birth then you will be very wise and you can study well in this present birth so that's the effect of karma but one thing we need to understand is whatever good acts or charity you performed in your past birth the benefit of that is going to be experienced by you in the present birth only in this one birth it will not be transferred to another birth so what is going to be transferred to the next birth is the amount of charity that you perform in this birth and not the amount of charity you performed in your past births maybe you have done many charity in your past births and as a result you would be born into a rich family you will be accumulating wealth in this birth but 
if you are surrounded by very bad company obviously you will be uh, wasting that money in doing sinful acts which is going to uh, get a horrible future birth so that's the nature of this now if you are wise then you should be not wasting all your time in accumulating the physical wealth that is perishable instead after saving the adequate amount of wealth that you need to survive this birth you should spend a large chunk of your time in accumulating for your upcoming births so it is more like a business you it, it is not wise to spend much of your time into your business that's not going to give you more profit likewise even these charitable acts they differ in the amount of benefit that you reap out of them so you should be able to identify the kind of charity that's going to give you more benefit but it is definitely very difficult to find that for yourself that's why god comes at the end of this 5000 year time cycle called kalpa he comes 100 years before the destruction of this old world kali yuga he enters an old man's body and gives the teachings about this 5000 year creation time cycle this world was created as heaven in the beginning and it continued to be heaven for the first 2500 years then it slowly becomes hell the main reason for that is while we were in heaven we were fully soul conscious because of which we were not attracted to any worldly things as a result we were not slaves of these five vices lust anger greed attachment and ego while we were in heaven for the first 2500 years because not only we considered ourselves to be the souls but also we consider the people whom we come in contact with to be the souls as well as a result we were not attracted by the external bodily beauty as a result we were very pure we, we didn't even have a trace of lust within us no not only that we also did not have a trace of other vices like anger greed attachment and ego we were as pure as a newborn baby as a matter of fact we were as pure as god himself that is why the residents of heaven are being worshiped by hindus till date as deities and temples but what we have forgotten is we were originally deities in the beginning and after taking several rebirths after entering hell we become body conscious because of which we were not eternally happy as we were in heaven because the true nature of soul itself is blissfulness since we were soul conscious since we were aware constantly that we are souls since our focus is on the souls we were able to uh, tap, tap into that happiness constantly but that was not the case after entering hell for the next uh, for the last 2500 years when we become fully body conscious as a result we started to depend on the external environment and the people uh, animals places and everything around us to derive happiness but we couldn't uh, experience that happiness constantly because they all are short lived not only that we slowly become unconscious which means we could no longer differentiate between right and wrong because of which we started committing more and more sins uh, 
in the form of lust, anger, greed, attachment and ego. And that is how we started losing all the wealth, health, peacefulness and uh, blissfulness that God blessed us with in the beginning of this world. And now God reveals the truth that this is actually a 5000 year time cycle which is called Kalpa and the significance of this Kalpa is whatever happens in one Kalpa that keeps repeating accurately Kalpa after Kalpa. For example, if you are watching this video, say 2023, you had watched this same video in the very same year, 5000 years back and you will be watching the same video every 5000 years once on this same particular date when you are watching this video. So obviously this world which is hell right now filled with all sorts of sorrow is going to become heaven that is completely free of any trace of sorrow pretty soon. And God himself has come from his supreme abode in the last hundred years just to give this knowledge and to enable us to become qualified to enter to take birth in heaven again. So all we need to do that uh, to do to enter heaven is to become as pure as God by remembering only God and nobody else. So God is also a soul which is why we call him as supreme soul param atma so he resides in this golden red colored light world called parandam not only god even we souls before taking birth resided along with god in this soul world the only difference between god and all other souls is we enter this birth and death cycle, we enjoyed the happiness of heaven for the first 2500 years, then uh, we became body conscious, then we started experiencing all sorts of pain and sorrow for the last 2500 years. But God stays away from the happiness of heaven and the sorrow of hell. The only reason he comes in the last hundred years is to reveal this secret and to make us soul conscious again. So he teaches us Raj Yoga, the essence of which is uh, to consider ourselves to be souls again and to remember God also as a point of light that shines like a tiny star in the golden red colored light world. So this is the simplest yoga. That is, you need to consider yourself service souls and you need to uh, remember God as a point of light in the golden red colored light world. The more you spend time in the remembrance of God, the more pure your soul is going to become. As a result, we will no longer be attracted to the worldly pleasures and you will become fully soul conscious gradually and as a result you will start to experience the ecstasy from within because as I mentioned earlier our soul itself is an embodiment of blissfulness. It was because we stayed pure that we deserved to enjoy the happiness of heaven in the first 2500 years. The reason we have lost everything gradually is because we have become impure gradually. So by impure, I refer to these five vices, lust, anger, greed, attachment and ego. It is by getting rid of these five vices fully that one becomes fully pure. And how do we achieve that? It is by constantly remembering God and nobody else that we become pure again.
So it is by becoming pure, by staying in remembrance of God, one's charity keeps on increasing. Moreover, by donating this knowledge of becoming pure to others, the amount of charity is going to increase more and more. So it is not only enough to increase our charity, but also we need to get rid of all those five vices which destroys all our charity. So that is the main reason God asks us to have no connection with this external world at a mental level. Though we lived in this world world, we interact with others uh, at school, colleges, offices, even within families, but at a mental level, you have to disconnect yourself from everything around you, but to connect yourself fully only with God. That is the only way to stay pure, to become filled with the charity that is necessary to sustain us for the next 2,400 years. The, so everything that you are going to enjoy for the next 2,500 years is going to be determined by the amount of charity that you accumulate in this last birth of this Kalpa. Even if we had no COVID at all, even then one's death is going to be sudden because nobody is going to announce your death beforehand. So now as per Srimad Bhagavad Gita, everything that happened was good, everything that's happening is good, everything that is to happen will definitely be good. So it is really good that we are seeing people dying at very young age. So obviously we can face the similar situation anytime soon. So now that was out of our control, but what is within our control is to stay in remembrance of God and to be alert all the time. Because even if you commit one sin just at the time of death, so that's going to wipe out much of your charity that you have been accumulating by being in remembrance of God. So you don't want that to happen. So you need to stay alert. So it is only by being in remembrance of God all the time while you are alive, you'll be able to be soul conscious even at the time of death. What happens if you are not soul conscious at the time of death, if you are worried about something in this world world at the time of death? So you should understand that mind, intellect and sanskar, they all form a part in the soul itself. So, if you want to go to America from India, you need to book tickets, then you need to physically be there at the airport before the flight starts. So, you need to undergo certain procedures before you finally reach America because you are into this physical body. But what happens after death is the soul leaves this body and that is what we call as death. So when the soul leaves the body, the first thought your mind creates is going to determine where this soul is going to take birth next. If you're going to think about somebody in America at the time of death, obviously your soul will reach America and take birth somewhere close to those whom you were thinking at the uh, time when you leave the body. Just as thieves target only the rich people, likewise even Maya, these five vices, target those who have accumulated this subtle wealth by being in remembrance of God. So 
it comes to steal your subtle wealth so how does it come in the form of lust in the form of anger in the form of greed attachment or ego somebody will become an instrument to induce one of these five vices thereby making you unconscious and still as much as it wants but if you are able to remain alert or conscious by remembering god all the time and by uh, remembering your aim of becoming uh, the highest status of heaven which is sti narayan then uh, obviously maya cannot steal from you and that is how even at the time of death you will not be cheated by these vices and you are then said to be the one who have accumulated full wealth that is necessary for taking full 21 births in heaven at the time of death all the others who have been busy uh, accumulating this perishable wealth they all go they all die empty handed all you need to do to accumulate so much of subtle wealth is to stay pure no no matter how much temptation uh, that comes in front of you to make you lustful if you stay calm no matter how provocative the situation around you is so if you are able to detach yourself totally from this world by considering yourself to be the soul that has no body because if you if you are even aware that you have a body then there is a slight possibility of becoming body conscious again that is why god considers uh, asks you to consider uh, to be dead which means uh, or out of this body now you need to stay alert to be fully soul conscious thereby you can take the um, take stinorain's body because stinorain is the highest status in satyug so as i mentioned earlier the time of our death is not in our hand but whether we are going to die fully conscious having accumulated as much wealth as possible or to die poor with absolutely no wealth uh, and die unconsciously is quite up to you so all we need to live consciously and to die consciously is to remember god as a point of light as much as possible by uh, becoming soul conscious and also to keep your mind busy with the knowledge given directly by god in the form of murli which is available absolutely free of cost in all brahma kumaris rajog meditation centers i'll be giving the links of uh, some of the youtube channels and websites that gives this murli in all languages in the description below this video please make use of it thanks again for watching